Welcome back chemists. In this video I'm going to go through how to calculate the pH of weak acids. You may have seen this formula before and we are going to use it but the different thing is we can't just put our hydrogen ion concentration in here directly like we could with strong acids. So first be patient with me. You need to know what are some weak acids, what does it mean to be a weak acid, and then we're going to do the math, okay? So the math problem that we're going to do, let me show you, it's this one. I'm going to work through that one with you. And then you have one to do. How fun. There's yours. So I promise I will go through the math, but we have to go through what are weak acids, why are they weak acids, and then we'll get to how we calculate the pH, okay? So hydrofluoric acid, nitrous acid, carbonic acid, sulfurous acid, phosphoric acid, and acetic acid are some of the most common weak acids you'll see. We're going to do our calculations today with these two, okay? But before we even move on to what makes something a weak acid, let's go through some facts, okay? So first, HA is any weak acid, okay? Don't get worried by that, it's just some kind of anion. Next, weak acids only partially ionize in water, okay? So what does that mean? So here are the two that we're going to use. This is what it means. If I call them HA, especially HF, kind of looks like that, but you're just saying any anion. When it hits a water molecule, only some of them are going to turn into anions and produce hydronium ions in water, okay? So what does that mean? It means they reach equilibrium. It means they only partially um, ionize, okay? So what would that look like at the molecular level? So here are some uh, weak acids. I wish I could fit more on the screen, but I think that's all I'm going to use. And what we're going to say is that, again, those are going to act as our acids. So let me take these off and remove our equation there. And we have to have a base, so water is going to take that role. So we're going to say plus a base, and water is going to be the base. And we're going to have um, a two-way arrow, so I'm going to take this and I got to turn this into a two-way arrow because these are not going to fully or 100% um, ionize, they're only going to partially. So you might see a double arrow like that, that's good. Next, what's going to happen is one of these, or very few, maybe even grab another one, let's say it's this one, is going to lose um, the proton, turn into a conjugate base ion, and it's negative. And what's going to happen is it'll find a water molecule, let's say it's this one, it'll protonate it, turning into hydronium, which will be the conjugate acid. But the key here is look at all of these weak acid molecules that are still intact. They are still molecular, they're still neutral, okay? That's what makes it be a weak acid, okay? So we're ready for the math. Here we go, okay? Don't forget also that HA and H3O are, are, are like synonymous. Next, percent ionization is going to be how many of these hydrogen ions are formed at equilibrium compared to the initial times 100. Last but not least, before I get to the math, is sometimes people will use these interchangeably, okay? So, yay, here we go. Off we go to the math problem. Okay, so here is the math problem that I'm going to do with you. All right, get my markers back in here, and i got to get my calculator ready to go. So we're going to calculate the pH of a 0.5 molar HF for hydrofluoric acid solution. It's got a Ka of 7.2, the negative 4, which is common. Um, you might have some books that disagree, but that's the one I found was most common, uh, right there, okay? And then we are going to calculate the what's called the percent ionization. All right, moving these off. Um, I will need this uh, Ka, but I'll look back at it. So I'm just going to move this just to the bottom for a second, just to kind of keep it down here for me. All right, first thing you want to do is write the, the equation, okay? So HF is going to come in contact with H2O or water molecules. Only some are going to ionize, turning into fluoride ions and producing hydronium ions, okay? That is called the reaction, so sometimes you might see an R. So R stands for reaction. All right, next thing that you're going to need to know is what's called the initial concentration. So I chose 0 0.5, 0 0.50. We don't worry about the concentration of water. I'm just going to kind of put a squiggle. Um, and then we'll put zero here and zero here. Now, a little disclaimer is really water is producing 1 times 10 to the minus 7th hydronium ions on its own. But very seldomly do you put that number in there, okay? So this is called the initial. So I stands for initial. All right, next you're going to say what's the change and what's the equilibrium. So C is change 
E is equilibrium, okay. That's gonna be our equilibrium concentrations, those are the ones we need. So they'll say some amount of X is gonna go over and produce these two ions. Remember, I just picked one of these hydrofluoric acids. We don't really know how many there are doing that. Um, so we're gonna say 0.5 minus whatever that amount is, and then X and X, okay? So now we've got what's called our ice or rice table. I'm gonna put this away. I will need the Ka now because I do need to know, you know, how much does a hydrofluoric acid produce in terms of ions. So the Ka um, that I found is 7.2 to the negative 4. And then this is going to be called the, um, like, equilibrium expression or the acid equilibrium expression because the A stands for acid. So it's the concentration of the fluoride times the concentration of the hydronium. This is equilibrium, it's just products over reactants, and then HF, and we're not gonna include the water because this concentration won't change, okay? So what you'll do then is say, okay, that equals uh, X and X, and then we're gonna divide it by 0.5 minus X, okay? Then you could simplify this to X squared over 0 0.50 minus X. Now, some of you that know math might be saying, uh-oh, oh no, here comes the quadratic equation. Now, we won't need the quadratic, let me show you why. There's this little trick, and it doesn't work all the time, okay? So be careful, this doesn't work all the time, but it works most of the time. Is that if our Ka times 400, don't worry about why this equation works, just, just, it does, okay? If I take my Ka of my acid and I multiply it by 400, if that's less than the initial concentration, I'm good to ignore this X, okay? Meaning I'll just get rid of it because it's such a small value, it won't change that initial concentration enough to be what's called statistically significant. It also has another name, it's called the 5% rule. You're gonna realize that that looks very suspicious um, because it looks almost identical, and really it is, to the percent ionization. So really this equation, put on the top here quick, and this one, they're the same thing, okay? But if you wanna know if you can ignore X right away, this works. So let's just check it. Let me just see if you can see how to use this. Let's put this down here. Let's use this pink color just to make sure it's okay. Here we go, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say 400 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative four. And we gotta check if that's less than our 0 0.50, okay? And if it is, we can ignore this minus X right here, right there in the denominator, denominator. All right, let's hope it does because it'll simplify the math, okay? So let me just check it with my calculator. So 400 times, um, don't forget how to use your scientific notation, a negative four, there we go. So I get 0.228, just um, barely. Okay, so you can see that sometimes we can't. We're getting actually pretty close to the cutoff where we can't. The good news is we can, okay? So let's just get rid of that X and I'll show you why mathematically that makes this so much easier. All right, here we go. So we're just basically gonna say 7.2 times 10 to the minus four equals X squared divided by 0.5. Now let's keep going down the page this way. So then you're gonna take 0.5, it's the same sort of room, but I'm gonna get rid of the zero. 7.2 times 10 to the minus four equals X squared, okay? Then what we're gonna do is take the square root of both sides. So I would do the square root and the square root. And then I kinda did the math, but let me just check it with you. I'll put my calculator here. Here we go. So we're gonna take 0.5 times um, 7.2, negative four, okay? So I get 3.6 to the negative four. All right, let's put that in here. All right, then we gotta take the square root of that. So I'm gonna hit uh, second and that button, and then I'm gonna go up, grab that number, grab it, and then calculate it. There we go, so 0 0.01897, oh boy, seven, and then I'm gonna stop at four, and then don't forget your unit. This is a molarity, okay? Do not forget your unit, okay? Next, what is this? Let me slide this up just to make sure we get this on the frame. This is the hydronium ion concentration. So 0 0.0189, I'm just gonna keep this seven because I can, I'm just gonna carry a couple extra sig figs. I really can only have two. Remember, that's a trailing zero that counts, okay? So now what do I do next? Here's the good news. I can calculate using my pH formula, this one. Oldie but goodie, right? So I can finally use this formula right here. 
So I'm gonna go up here and go, okay, oop, let's switch colors. That way it won't all blend together. Let's slide this down. So we're gonna say pH equals the negative log of that hydronium ion concentration. Remember H plus and H3O plus are interchangeable. So then we're gonna put in the point 0, 0.01897, and I'm just gonna get rid of the unit. And then what happens is this equals, what do we get? Well, let's check, okay? So then take um, negative and then second, oh, no, not second, I don't need second. So just negative and then log, there we go. And then go up and grab that number, drag it down, close parentheses, and we get a pH of 1.7218, et cetera, okay? Now, here's some sig fig rules with pH, okay? We didn't even know there were special rules. There are. The number of sig figs in the concentration is the number of decimal places in the pH. Boom, okay, so what does that mean? It means that I had initial concentration with two sig figs. I can only keep two decimal places. The one is sort of taking the place of this, um, Point zero, okay? So what does that mean? It means I can only say that the pH is 1.72, okay? Box your answers out. Seriously, such a thing that your teachers want you to do. Little thing, you'll make them smile. Okay, don't you wanna make your teacher smile? All right, next thing, let's calculate the percent ionization. Um, the formula was percent ionization. Ionization, okay, equals, we're doing good here. Stick with me, we're gonna be fine. And then you've got 0 0.01897. So it's the X concentration or the hydronium concentration or the hydrogen ion concentration. Again, don't forget these two things are the same, okay? I prefer this one, okay? Then we're gonna divide that by the initial concentration and then times 100, so we gotta have a percent. So let's just check here. Um, I'm gonna go way up here and grab that number. Grab it, divided by 0.5. And then I'm gonna hit equals. I just like to hit equals. I have no idea why. And then times 100, and then we get 3.794, et cetera, et cetera. Again, sig figs are important, so we can only keep two total sig figs. This isn't a pH. We go back to those easy sig fig rules. Now you find them easy. So we can only say it's 3.8% um, ionized. So the percent ionization. It's almost your turn, guys, to do this, guys and gals, we'll say. There is your answer. Box it out. Make your teacher smile. Here we go. It's your turn. Exciting. Here we go. Pause the video and figure it out. Come back. Write your equation. Set up your rice table, your ice table. Get your Ka. Set it equal to your, you know, equilibrium expression for the acid. Put in your values from the rice table. Can we ignore the x in the denominator? Yes, we can. Yay. In fact, look how much smaller that is. That's because this K value is much smaller. I even upped the concentration and it still made it okay. Then there's the rest of the math. Hopefully this is centered. Here's where I calculated my X, which is actually both, okay? So I'm gonna add this in. This is also the concentration of our acetate ion. So acetate ion, okay? And if you had to know that, you could put that in there too, okay? The last thing we could do, let me put it off on the side, is what if somebody asks you, you know, what's the concentration of this left over? So you'd say CH3COOH, which is your acetic acid. Um, what you'll do is you'll take this 1.5, and then you'll subtract this number. I don't even have room here. So subtract, I'll just put it down here. Subtract it from 0.005, 1, 9, 6, okay, and this is molarity. So let me just quick grip my calculator and show you, just in case somebody wants what are called all major species. So 1.5 minus 0 0.00, what was it, 51962, and we get a whopping one point, oh my gosh, here I proved something. Did you guys see that? 4948, guys and gals, okay? Look what happens with sig figs. What does it go back to? 1.5, look at that. Might make you go, wait a minute. Now I think I understand why we can get rid of that X in the bottom, okay? Great, go forth, calculate your own weak acids, and enjoy. Best wishes, chemists, see you again in the next video.